Hey guys, John from John's DIY Playground. Today I'm going to review this switch mode kit um, from lowpowerlab.com and it's uh, sw slash switch mode is where you can find it on the internet. And what a switch mode is, is it's a smart switch, kind of an internet of things type of switch where you replace your light switches in your house with one of these or several of them throughout the house. Um, they operate wirelessly. Um, they do need the 120 volts of power, of course. But um, they talk wirelessly to your home automation controller, could be a Raspberry Pi, um, and they can talk to each other and work together. So let's get this thing opened up and I can show you what's inside. Quite a few parts today, but uh, I'll show you step by step how I go through it. Um, there's a laser cut acrylic piece that's going to be one of the show covers, um, a back protection cover here also. Uh, there's a couple circuit boards. One's the main uh, switch mode board. Um, this is actually supporting the, the buttons that are going to be a, a three button setup on our configuration today. Uh, the main relay that powers uh, one of the circuits on and off for controlling the original lights. Uh, another relay um, buttons button covers caps uh, we got a lot of headers so let me get this all organized and show you how it works how it will go together this is the heart and the brains of the thing like I said Motino it's a uh, Arduino based microcontroller that you can flash code onto but the code in this case is uh, provided for us in the kit and um, we're just gonna flash it and it'll be kind of plug-and-play once we get this thing assembled if you open your web browser to lowpowerlab.com slash switchmote, you'll get this page here and just scroll down a little bit and then click on assembly guide. When you have the assembly guide here as that I'll be following today, um, it's got detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how to assemble the kit. Uh, the only surface mount component is right here is this diode and it's not that hard to actually solder even with standard soldering equipment. Um, and I'll go step-by-step -step through here, everything else is through hole. And on each little picture, if you click on it just one time, you'll see it zooms into a nice uh, clean, clear uh, with detail and uh, actually has some nice hints and tips on a lot of these pictures about orientation of the LEDs and trying to get everything just right. So I'll go through this. I've got a, a revision two kit. So if anything's different versus these instructions, I'll let you know. And if there's anything else that's different, since I do also have a three button kit with two relays, um, I'm building it in such a way so that I'll have two different relays so I can control 120 volt load here and then a separate load here. And then the third button will be a virtual button. So let's get started on it. So I'm about to get started with the assembly here and I'm not going to show all the assembly steps because that online guide that's on uh, Low Power Lab is very good and uh, don't need to show everything. But this kit does have only one SMD component. It's, it's this diode that I'm going to start with. Um, it is uh, polarized, so you have to watch the silver dot. Make sure the silver dot is towards this side of the board. Um, it's marked with the arrow, where the arrow points is where the, the dot should be. So I'm going to go ahead and solder that on. The other thing I'm, I meant to mention was this kit has several different varieties. Um, I'm going to put together the three button type today and two of the buttons will be switchable up to 10 amps and 250 volts each circuit so there will be two relays going in on the circuit and the third button is like a virtual button so that can be used in your home automation system to control other things or even just have the button with the green and red uh, LEDs giving you indication of something for example if your garage door is up or down so let me get started with the assembly of this and then we'll move on to uh, showing you how some of the bigger pieces fit together after all these components. Okay guys so I got the smaller of the two circuits circuit boards nearly finished and I noticed in following some of the online instructions a couple of differences on this board compared to uh, earlier online instructions and pictures of the boards. The layout's changed slightly but it's well labeled and it's easy to pick up on. Um, I got two transistors here because I think I've got the two relay system instead of just one which was in the pictures. Also the LED placement is rotated a little bit uh, but that's no problem it's well marked. The placement of this fuse and the uh, varistor are uh, also slightly different but also marked well. And so I'm just going to get started and get these uh, last few big components on this board then I'll be done. But another tip I can share is um, when you're soldering the headers on the Motino, don't be an idiot like me because uh, the, uh, the one side takes all 13 pins for the headers but on the other side of the Motino you only solder up until pin number 7 then you stop. So if you do keep soldering and leave all the pins on, you'll have an interference condition when you try to put the Motino down on the board 
and it solders in here, it'll run into this power LED and also interfere here. So just a word to the wise and learn from my mistakes. So I'm done with the main board here, this power supply unit plus the Motino section, all the headers are on. There are no components that actually go on the bottom. Um, and it's a tight fit for this uh, power supply and these two relays on the board. I mean, there's like really no space to spare. They, Felix didn't waste any space. He populated it really nice. So when this Motino goes on here like so, it sits in there like that. And that's your radio control, and that's what we'll be flashing through uh, right there on that board. So what we got to do next is work on the other part of the board, this bigger board, which is really the interface for the switches. And we're going to put on the LEDs, uh, green and reds, and uh, then we'll be mating it to the other board. So let me get started on this board now. All right, I've got the switch part, or the shield as they call it, completed. Um, there are no components, again, on the back side of this board. And it's pretty simple. There's three resistors on this side, three on the other, along with uh, six LEDs. And you can put the switches on in multiple colors. They give you yellow, green, and white buttons. So um, that goes like that, and then this cover goes over like this. And um, what we're going to do next is we're going to mate this top shield with our Motino part. And they'll use headers to go through these various points here. So I'm going to attach those together and show you what it looks like after it's all put together. Okay, so we've got the top part of the shield mounted to the bottom part. Um, there's several headers that you had to solder here, here, and then on the other side, another pair, and then another bunch here. So that's how you join the two halves together, and uh, it's a nice tight fit. And next thing we're going to do is just put the back acrylic cover on to protect the circuits, and then we'll head over to the computer, and we'll hit the programming port here, and get the software in the Motino. Okay, on the software side of things, to get our switch mode running, we need to follow a three-step process. The first step is going to be to load this software configuration sketch onto our Motino. And this sketch can be found over on GitHub. It's also available through the, uh, the guide on the Low Power Lab website. And you just load it into an Arduino IDE. Um, all these settings here are um, not to be touched. You don't need to change anything. Um, like I said, this is the first of three steps. We're going to upload this sketch to our Motino. When I'm done with that, then we're going to open PuTTY as a second step and actually configure the Moti our, uh, Motino and our switch mode. And then we'll load a final sketch. So let me upload this now and then we'll start the uh, PuTTY step. Okay guys, I got the uh, initial config sketch loaded onto the switch mode. And one other tip I have for you all, if you're using an FTDI connector to flash your Motino for the first time and uh, it has a micro USB to uh, USB connection, um, just like with Arduinos, the cable can make the difference if you're having communication issues. So keep that in mind if you cannot con communicate between your computer and your Motino or Arduino. Check the cables, swap cables, and make sure it's not the cable that's causing the problem. So anyway, another tip just to pass on to you all. Um, one of the things when we do our configuration is um, I'm going to uh, tell it what node ID I want for my home automation system for this new switch mode. I already have one in my system and it's node number 69 so I'm going to make this new switch that uh, I'm programming now node number 70. So we have to configure now just a one time thing and to do that we're going to use PuTTY. So I found that my Motino is sitting on COM number 8. So in PuTTY you just change that here and then for the baud rate you need to change that to 115 200. Then after that just click on open and you'll see here it's uh, communicating now uh, with the switch mode. Um, first thing we check is the first uh, frequency I am on 915 megahertz so that's good. Now node ID so if I hit the letter I like I said I want to make this number 70 and enter so that no problem so now you can see it's actually reporting back that it is node number 70 um, network ID that needs to be the same for all of your um, nodes in your network in your home automation system in my case I use the number 101 um, so that's taking on that value now <clears throat> the RFM type W or CW I can just show that what the options are 
I actually have the um, higher output Motino, so the HW, so I want to choose a 1 here. So now it's HW hardware. That's critical, actually, to make sure you have that set the right way so that you can take advantage of that. <clears throat> and then it looks like it's pausing here on me. Um, let me check my connections and we'll come back. Sorry about that hiccup on the last clip there. I did have some USB issues, but uh, probably would have clipped the video shortly thereafter anyway because I don't like to show my encryption key, <clears throat> which I use with all my other home automation nodes. So anyhow, that was step two with the putty. And now I'm using a program called CodeBender. It's actually a website, codebender.cc. And you can set up an account there, and it's really cool because they actually do have board configuration for Motino. So what I've done is I've gotten the final third piece of software code, which is the sample sketch for Motino for the switch mode. And um, <clears throat> really, if you're going to do a three button setup like I have, you don't need to change anything in this sketch. Um, the other thing you might consider is if your gateway ID is not number one, <clears throat> that's the only thing I would think of you, you might change. Otherwise, you don't need to change anything. So once you have this sketch loaded up in uh, Code Bender, all you have to do is click on Run on Arduino and it will do the compiling of the code and it will send it over the USB using the FTDI adapter into the Motino. doesn't take very long and then uh, after that uh, it'll say uh, successful upload. There you go. So now that we have that um, I can take a look at uh, my Motino or my switch mode and see that the red LEDs all three of them are on on each switch and let me jump over to my home automation gateway. So nothing is showing right now other than my original light switch uh, that I have here already. Um, when I hit my first button, it's gonna try and transmit to my home automation gateway. So let me push a button. And so I just pushed one now. And what should happen is, <laughs> the stupid thing should show up here. Let me hit refresh on the browser. But, uh, okay, there it is. Um, it's node right here. Um, you can see node ID 70 like I had put into the E squared. And uh, I need to tell it that it's a type of a, uh, a switch mode. I'm laughing because you go through these things so many times and try to test it ahead of time. But um, it's really funny how this stuff works sometimes. But uh, here we go. I'm going to call it switch mode 2. Oops. And then I'll show you what it looks like when I hit the uh, the home button on my controller. It's called a switch mode two, and there's the description. It says it's on because it's just showing one of the buttons, and I can it's the middle button that it's tracking right now. But I can show status on my gateway on or off. The other thing I can do is it has two-way communication, so I can manually um, click that relay on or off in my controller here instead of physically pushing the button, doing it from my console. So. Anyhow, that's uh, the home automation gateway and the switch mode review uh, from Low Power Lab. The thing that I liked about this kit was the instructions are well written and it has a lot of uh, almost 99% through hole construction. So for me, it was really easy to solder together. And uh, I just like that uh, the parts out of the box, there aren't that many to solder together. Um, so the Motino part of it's mostly all put together. and. Um, if you have any other questions, please visit uh, lowpowerlab.com and check out their forums. They're very helpful people there. Um, I've gotten a lot of help there myself. Or leave a comment in the um, video below here in the comments section. I'll try to answer your question for you. So thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Please hit like if you enjoyed it. This is John from John's DIY Playground. Have a great day.